Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started because we do have um, a lot of material that we want to cover. Um, so, um, thank you all for coming to our fifth annual Tagantar Workshop for Beginners, Traditions and Customs Explained. Uh, as you know, ACMS is a nonprofit educational organization. We work to strengthen and deepen cultural connections between academic and cultural connections between the United States and Mongolia. We organize this workshop every year in an effort to teach the expat community here in UB about uh, one of Mongolia's most important holidays. So before we get started with the workshop, in keeping with tradition, we will have a special modern horse performance. This traditional instrument, also known as the horse head fiddle, is typically played at the beginning of any special event in Mongolia. Uh, it is believed to chase away bad spirits and is played during Tsagansar to wish families a healthy and prosperous new year. We're very happy to have Flama here from the Mongolian State Conservatory to play. So I will go ahead and let him do, the, do his thing. <laughs> Job. Thank you, Islam. So now, we, I guess you could say we've officially started. Um, I'll quickly introduce our presenters and um, tell you a little bit about them. So our workshop is led by our language pro program manager, Dr. Tserma Tomer Batter. Tserma has been uh, leading our language program for over 10 years, and she's taught countless researchers how to speak and read and write in Mongolian, and also about Mongolian culture. Assisting her with translation is our program coordinator, Tushin Zaya. Uh, and I'm excited that we have some guest presenters and performers uh, who are both uh, ACMS, former or cur current ACMS fellows. And then after the presentation, we'll have the chance to practice and engage in some of the traditions and activities that take place during Tsagansar. Um, so now I'll go ahead and hand it over to Tushin and Serma. So that is spirit is away now since we played it in the <laughs> final part, so we're good to go now. Okay. Ja, Sam Bestrano, Bugdere. Hello everyone. Sam Bano. Aha, Mane Uno Rang 
та бүхний төлөө зориулан хийж байгаа цагаан сарын тухай товч лекцэнд маань хүрэлсэн ирсэнд маш их баярлаа. Thank you all for coming our presentation for make just for you guys to enjoy your stay during the one and only year. Thank you all. Монголчууд бид нэрийн тэмдэглэлдэг олон баярудын нэг нь бол цагаан сар байгаа юм. This is the definitely one of the celebration Mongol and celebrate. So this is the one of the biggest ones. Special one. Yeah. Mongol was for the Nazing, Autumn was sorn, Sahan Sarik, Autumn Jilling, Umnos, Tim Gilding, Yersing, Autumn Jilte, a Mongol Chut, Whitney Hoytwood, Pas Oring Sing, Yim Anslite, Bayra. So, Mongolia and also other Asian countries, they've been celebrating modern year for hundreds of years. So, Mongolia, as we, as an Asian country, also for location, for everything, we also do celebrate, but there's a little bit different way how we celebrate. Ага. За Монголчууд бидний хувьд бол өвлийг одоо Монголын өвд бол их хүйтэн. Тэгээд өвлийн одоо хүйтнийг үнэтэй сайхан давж ирсэн ирсэн юм бэлгэдэж тэмдэглэдэг юм сайхан баяр юм аа. So for us for Mongolia this is kind of celebration for overcoming harsh winter. Some of you guys have already experienced harsh winter, right? So this is a definite celebration for overcoming this one. Yeah. Ага. Тэм төвчрээс Монголчууд бидний дунд нэг хилдэг байдаг. Энэ бол цагаан сарын дараа хавар болчихдоо гэж ярьдаг. So uh, the Lunar New Year is celebrated uh, basically in January or the uh, uh, February, depending on the moon pace. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so after Tangan Sun, once it's done, uh, it becomes warmer outside. No matter if it's in February or January, once it's done, it's going to be warmer. So we're around the corner too. Yeah. <laughs> За ингээд цагаан сарыг хэрхэн тэмдэглэж ирдэг ирсэн тухай товч мэдээлэх үг яа. So now we're going to start uh, how we celebrate for hundreds of years distribution. Аха. За тэгээд энэ баярыг тэмдэглэж ирсэн түүхийг ер нь хэдэн бид нар 6 хуваж үзэж байгаа. А нэгдүгээрх нь бол цагаан идээ дэлгэрэх хүйтэй холбогдсон баярын нэр байна. Okay. So there is different timelines for celebration of Tsangan Sar, basically six. The first one is Nikdwerh in Hol Tsangan. Tsangan hite dilgir hui. Kichaga in Hol Tsangan zirik namar tsakt marn unte sahang batat. Tiga Tsangan hite ik dilgir sing in hui tuh mangkut chot Tsangan sari tim dilgir sing in Hol Chinggis Khan as umnu hui gijer tak. Okay. So before Chinggis Khan time, we used to celebrate the Tsangan Sar. In uh, autumn, in the fall, not in the in the uh, this time, because uh, back then it was the time to celebration for the food, special special dairy products, because the the animals are fat enough and food is plenty enough. But since uh, Qing Song time, dating back to 13th century, we started to celebrate it in uh, in winter. I mean, yeah. За дараагийн үе нь бол Чингис хааны үе. А энэ үед бол цагаан сарыг бид нар намар биш хавар тэмдэглэх болсон. Ягаад гэвэл бол энэ үед Чингис хаан хаан ширэн залрын суух ёсл хийсэн. А энэ ёсл нь хаврын тэргүүн сарын шинийн нэгний өдөр таарсан. Тэгээд энэ өдөр бол бас Азийн орнуудад цагаан сарыг тэмдэглэдэг өдөр. Тэгээд энэ хоёр өдрийг ерөнхийд нь ойртуулаад Монголчууд хавар цагаан сарын баяраа тэмдэглэх болсон гинэ. So like we mentioned previously, since we started celebrating in the winter time, it's because of two, there are a number of reasons. One of the reasons is dating back time, it was a great Mongol Empire establishment. So Genghis Khan united all those small tribes and also proclaimed as a king, Han as a king. So also, like, so it's kind, it become the celebration for the beginning of the new history for Mongolians. That's why they started to celebrate it in winter. Also, it's going to be much similar with other Asian countries who follow the lunar pace for the new year. So next phase is the Manchu Empire. So as you may or not know, Mongolians have been under control of Manchus for 200 years. So this is dating back to that time. Mm -hmm. It's we just call it both on time. Both on is our last king. Mm -hmm. Тийм за тэгээ манжийн дарлын үед бол Монголчууд цагаан сарыг яг өнөөгийн хэсэг бол өргөн дэлгэр тэмдэглэдэггүй гэхдээ нууцаар одоо тэмдэглэдэг байсан. So during Manchurian time it was not celebrated like today. I mean not everyone celebrates that. So basically secretly or high officials. Mm -hmm. 
За дараагийн нэг үе нь бол богдхан засгийн үе байгаа. А энэ үед бол монголчууд цаан сарыг тэмдэглэхгүй гэхдээ бүгдээрээ богдханда барааллахан очиж мөргөл үйлдээд а тэгээ цаан сарын шинний нэгний өдрөөс 7 хоногийн турш Монголын одоо төрийн албан газруудын дээр Монгол улсын төрийн талбайг мандуулдаг ингэж тэмдэглэдэг байсан байна. So during the match time how we celebrate is like high officials, high rank mamas and also the civilians will visit the uh powers and also visit the temples. That's how they celebrated that. Mm-hmm. And now next one is a socialism communism time. Uh-huh. The Mingasun Zong Kocha on US Mongol Yurusa Chagan Sarik, Tim Dilkuy by Horgig, а энэ баярыг тэмдэглэж болно гэж хэлсэн. А тэгээд 1960 оны үеэс энэ баярыг цагаан сарын баяр гэж хэлэхгүй нэгдэлтийн баяр гэж тэмдэглэсээр 1990 онтой зовлгсон байна. Okay, so during the Soviet Union, Mongolia has been a kind of satellite country of the Soviet Union. So during the 1930s it was a great time for purge. And also it also banned to celebrate not uh, at the time. So also in but uh, around 1940s, they just allowed to the herders to celebrate, not everyone. And around 1960s, it was they tried to change, replace the name of the celebration under their like communal day, communal celebration, something like that. But basically, herders still celebrating it, not the everyone. Mm-hmm. And around 1990s, when we become a democratic country, everybody is free to practice any religion, practice any celebration they want. Since then we started to use the mm-hmm. started to celebrate the time inside all of us. За тэгээд одоо та бүхэнд цагаан сар гэж нэрлэх болсон нэрийн талаар товчхон хэлж үгүй. Okay, so now we can explain you the meaning of цагаан сар. Is there anyone who knows what the цагаан сар means? What I'm looking at the slide. <laughs> Yeah, so right, I tune, tune yeah. and all on New Year, uh-huh. different way we say. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Now let's get into this. Yeah. За монголчууд сүг ихийн цагаан сэтгэлтэй ихийн цагаан сүтэй холбон үздэг бас монголчууд байгаль дэлхийдээ их холбоотой ойрхон тэнгэрээ шүтэж амьдэрдэг байсан. Тийм учраас байгаль дэлхийдээ дандаа сүү цагаан эдийнхээ дэжиг үргэж ирсэн. А тэгээд эндээ сүүдэд сүү цагаа гэж хэлэгддэг энэ үгнээ сүүдэд бид нэр сүү шиг ариун цагаан тийм ээ хэргүү явахыг бэлгэдэж энэ үгийг цагаан сар гэж энэ баярыг нэрлэх болсон байна. It's white. So for Mongolians, white represents the white, uh, like heart, uh, very good heart. It represents that. Also, that's also it represents the milk. So for example, we do some make some offerings by the milk mm-hmm. to the deities or masters that we don't, cannot see. So for Mongolians, white represents your poor heart and also the milk. So milk is also is very typical, very special to it for someone you love, someone who is visiting to your family. So in that way, maybe it could be one explanation for that. Okay. За одоо бүгд дээрээ цагаан сарын ха баярл уу яваад орцгой. За эхний яг цагаан сарын өмнөх өдрийг бид нэр битүүн буюу битүүний өдөр гэж хэлдэг. Okay, now we're ready to celebrate the Sunset Bad before that. There's Eve. Mm-hmm. So, long in year Eve, what we do, how we do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, some, there are some rituals. It's seen on these slides, uh-huh. but it's just the main points. So, between literally means there's a no hole, it's a kind of complete. And another way, on that day, there's a no moon, dark moon day. So, what, that's why we call it between. Simply means no, uh, like complete. Yeah, this one, ah, in what Nick Gurk Tadburn? This is the first one. Aha, I hold Gurk Tadburn the horror. Aha, Ungerson Gilte, Ungerson on the bus, Irjaga on the Buch Human, Bittering Agile Wills, at the Erudmin, Buch Human, Bitu, Duran, Sahan Bachi, Billitich, was Bitun Gitch Nirlet, in Udro Humus, at the Girona Sahan Civil, the Hardy Tege, Biltrick Ticket, Oran Bugdere, Hamging Under Nasnita, Sogdrat, Hardik, Hard on the Bitur Tate. Uh-huh. So second uh, explanation goes to the meaning of the complete. So everything has to be complete on this day before the new year. So if you have some, had some argument with someone else, 
you should consult with that. If there is any, um, you, uh, you, if you owe to someone else, you should repay that, for example. So everything has to be perfect to start a whole new year. Okay. But that's why it's called Bitung. And also this day, we gather, all, uh, all of us gather at the eldest family and eat until we are full. <laughs> it's yeah. really difficult, but everyone pushes you to eat, 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 like this way. So be ready for that. So you guys can go ahead and visit the families, but make sure not to eat too much. Of course, this is the tradition, but yeah. you guys are not used to that. Yeah. We are okay, we are used to that, but so just a friendly reminder. Okay, so next explanation goes to related to this ritual. Mm -hmm. So it's called morning ritual. So one of you is celebrated to based on the uh, astrological order, like the name of the animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is related to the animal uh, this kind of calendar is the who started this one is who knows who knows is our ancestors they invented this kind of calendar, and after that, some other Asian countries follow this tradition, and it's, so this is related to this one. So everyone is a bird in the exact, like, specific year, 12 animals, right? So based on that, you will do certain things on the very first day of the Lunar New Year. So those animals, why they chose those this typical twelve animals is because related, it's related to the animals that they do worship during the time. That's how they name those animals. For example, pig and uh, yeah. rooster and like and other animals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So every year they it, it mm -hmm. got some certain title. Mm -hmm. for, for example, this year for the peak year of the peak, it's called Orvoch. Uh -huh. So I cannot, we cannot actually translate it because mm -hmm. that's just the title. But and uh, this one, uh, in uh, uh, Orvoch, so the Orvodak is the actual the name of the star. Mm -hmm. So where first star shown on that day is the given the name is a given to as a title for that year. So Orvodak is simply is the name of the star. So like I said, like we said before, every very first day of the London year, you will do this certain ritual very early in the morning. So this ritual is related to the Orvodakt. So there, uh, she has shown in the slides, for, this is the really simply means like take the first step. Mm -hmm. So your first step should be really precise and mm -hmm. right. For example, basically based on which year you were born, you will be given certain instruction. Mm -hmm. 
how you start your take your first step. For example, here is this example. Like um, start by walking softest, tear up paper, release it, pick it up some dirt, and release it. Also, while doing that, you will chant the certain mantras. So, and, and that day, everyone will go around, mumbling, some, doing something weird things, like turning up there, you know, or like uh, sprinkling the water or something. This is just a part of the, that ritual. So, please don't get surprised for that. Yeah. За тэгээ зүгээр мөрөө гаргахта Монгол эрчүүд орхон байгаа уул овон дээрээ гардаг. Гэхдээ Улаанбаатарчууд бол бог дуулруу руу явж болно эсвэл зүгээр гэрийнхээ иргэн тойронд явж болно. Энэ үйлдлийг та нар удахгүй харах байх. So uh, basically on that day when you take your, your first step, especially the men, they go to the closest mountain or like high hills to get some spirit. So this is really common in the countryside, for example. For Mongolia, I mean, for UB residents, it's hard to go to the mountain, right? So basically, we just do it like in the neighborhood. But the men, before the sunrise, they gather the closest mountain around the city, and they do this kind of ritual. But the men. <coughs> okay, so it's the really main important thing very first day of the London New Year, which is called Zofgo. Mm -hmm. It's a way of visiting the family, elder people, in a certain gesture. Mm -hmm. How you uh, introduce yourself, how you visit a uh, greeting. It's a part of the greeting. <laughs> Instead of just saying hi, hello, how are you, we just say different words mm -hmm. with a more respected way mm -hmm. to show some respect to our elder people. За тэгээ золгохдоо бид нэр хадаг хэрэгэлдэг энэ хадаг маань таван өнгийн хадаг байдаг. Тэгээд ер нь хадгийг ямар зорилгоор хэрэгэлдэг вэ гэвэл ерөөсөө л гурван зорилго байгаа. Нэгдүгээр хин. So during this great thing, this ritual, we use certain garment which is called hadag. It's a like looks like a silk coat. So it represents a very meaningful thing for us. So we give it to someone we respect or old people. When we visit the family, uh -huh. so we will give you some explanation on the colors and also why we use that, what occasions. Yeah, I have bitner tongue or unking hat of hirgiltic. There are five different colors. I had the coron zertwara, Nigor represents to hand it to someone. Aha, Nigor zertonot, Borhan Shutende Urgutuk. So, first, it's a given to the as an offering to the god uh -huh. or uh -huh. something. Uh, very, um, let's just say, ovo. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen ovo? <coughs> ovo. Like uh, dirt, mm -hmm. like under the hills, stones. Mm -hmm. stones. Mm -hmm. So, for example, that's really important place, yeah. right? For example, uh -huh. over there we can put them in. The second reason is expressing your gratitude to someone else. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying thank you, you just thank it. Ah, daragin suitin zarlon na thora mangotchot hatig aliwa uil hirik hirik tuk jishe na thora shodgin uil shin bai shin bai rakh ke mau imru uil yaudl bas hatig hirik. So also hatig is also used for a number of the occasions. It could be funeral. It could be a new warm housewarming or something. It's special occasions we use this one. Танар Монгол айл зочлохдоо энэ хадгийг хаан хаан тавьснийг харах байх аа. So during your visit we are pretty sure that you will not as where they put these ones inside the gate inside the house. Аха вэн а тэгээд бид нар золгохдоо ер нь цэнхэр хадгийг их хөвчлөн хэрэгэлдэг. So for the London New Year the blue one is a very common one. За хадаг маань энэ хоёр тартай байна. А энэ нь бол а энэ тал нь бол задгай байгаа. Нэг тал нь задгай, нэг тал нь битүү байгаа. So uh -huh. when we hand it to someone, we fold it. One side is open, other side is complete. Ah, the gate hand is open. So, ah, in that way, that that way, 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 that open side to that person like this way it really represents that i don't I, i'm poor heart I don't, you have a poor heart we are okay mm -hmm. like showing your respect to the person mm -hmm. 
одоо бид хоёр та нарт зовгож үзүүлье. Now we should okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. she cannot give you it to me. I, yeah. I'm supposed to give it to her yeah. because yeah. she is older than me. Oh, yeah, yeah. She is younger than me. Yeah. Her, right? Okay, yeah, now you. I'm supposed to show you how to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hope you guys understand. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then Where you can see is our hands. So how? my hand, you know, I am, I am older. Elbow, yeah. Like this, this way. Supporting his the, her the, Your elbow, hand is like, like, like no this one, like, this, like way. this way. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're doing this, we exchange greeting words. Amar Bano. 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 So you guys are okay with if you say Amar Bano. They will this like, is very Bano. easy one. Easy Amar Bano. One, right? <laughs> so you just say Amar Bano and they will she will just accept yeah. it uh-huh, yeah. like this way. And while doing this, she might kiss me. Yeah. Like this. Like this one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. That I can make you a job. I can give a slot to get the job of the day. Okay. Also, next thing. So, we have shown you guys. Can you guys see this? Yeah, I will show you. Okay, let's just show it over here. In the center. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, this is called Huruk. Mm-hmm. For you guys, it looks it's like a bottle, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for us, it's something really important one. Uh-huh. So, it's part of our definitely cultural heritage. That is the first time that we have to do this. 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 So, there are three reasons why we use this one as a great thing. We have to do this. So, first one is very simple. When you meet someone else, come across with someone else, you will just talk and say, Hello, how are you? While talking, you guys will exchange it. So mm-hmm. it's a way of talking. Okay. Ah, that again is just not. Ah, that be. I'm not going to And next one is that you are showing that person I'm okay with you. Mm-hmm. I don't have any. Mm-hmm. I don't hold any grudge with mm-hmm. you. I'm okay with you. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to talk to you. Ah, or that just from the heart, just hunting, much hunting, much time with the kids. And third reason is showing respect. Uh-huh. So respect is really important when you go into dating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you talk to someone else uh-huh. who is older than you, mm-hmm. like you lower your voice so or. Uh-huh. Okay, now, here's a simple lesson. Uh-huh. How to do this properly when someone is hands to you? What are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. Uh-huh. When you, uh, you open the door, uh, you open the door, you open the door, you open the door, like this so way. So it should be it, on the right, right hand, yeah. not the left hand. Everything should be on the right then, hand, right? Then. And give it to someone yeah. like this. Aha, uh-huh. yeah, this one. Aha, uh-huh. you and give me? Mm-hmm. You give it to yeah, her. Yeah. And then you just like, smell. you can just smell. Okay, or you can take little bit things. Take like, some part, be careful. put it on your finger, mm-hmm. and you can inhale it. Yeah. But uh-huh. because make sure you've got this small amount of of that. Uh-huh. You, you will just sneeze and you will be really in trouble, okay? Uh-huh. It's so tiny part. Uh-huh. Just inhale. Or if you don't want to inhale it, you can just show like mm-hmm. smelling. Yeah. So you don't have to inhale it, okay? Yeah. Tigit Tanner Otto Chan Sarah Mongo Delta Chichat Mongo Dirte Imhte Humus uh in Yomig in Gate Pusinde in Gate on the belt, it simply means it's just that one body. Mm-hmm. Horuk. So especially mm-hmm. the men, they always carry this one. But in the countryside, it's pretty common. But in the city, of course, it's not. You will not see someone else who is hanging carrying this one. But during this special occasion, especially Lona New Year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
uh, important one is that the, you see that helium ball? Mm -hmm. You see that the layer of the uh, mm -hmm. cookies over mm -hmm. there? So we just call it heavy ball. Mm -hmm. So the number of the layers are always odd numbers, which represents that suffering and the happiness. Mm -hmm. So in life, we always go through everything, right? Not We are not happy all the time. Sometimes we suffer. Mm -hmm. So it represents that. So basically, uh, three, five, seven, or nine. Mm -hmm. So nine, if you see nine layers, it's basically the older people in their 60s or 70s. Mm -hmm. They will write nine layers. For example, someone like me, if I'm young, I, I don't have to do this like nine layers. Three or five is good enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So on the table you will see a very quick one, mm -hmm. the meat, or big meat, which is a sheep, a sheep rump. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, it's given to us put before this someone you really respect. But also it's used only during the Tagansa. This kind of thing. Uh-huh. So both is looks like a dumpling. So I would just say you guys it's a dumpling. But we will make hundreds and thousands of them. So when you visit the family, you will have at least three dumplings, at least. Mm -hmm. So you're going to visit five to six families every single day. So all of the Mongolians put on away on those three days. Mm -hmm. yeah. so three yeah. so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And also salad and appetizers, mm -hmm. and of course also white food. Before you start eating other things, they will offer you white ones, especially, basically I mean, Dairy products. So it might be sour, it might be sweet, yeah. we don't know, yeah. it might depend. Uh -huh. So just try a small amount, take yeah. a small amount. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alright, mm -hmm. so next one is the um, traditional costume. So as you all know, Mongolians have is it just the 3 million of us, but 20 something ethnic groups. Every ethnic group has got their different own, their own uh, national costumes. So during special celebrations like Roman Year, mm -hmm. we try to wear our traditional clothes. Mm -hmm. But there are different varieties. Some of them could be modern, very old one or something. So many kind of things. So today, one of our former, uh, our language student, mm -hmm. and easily, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who came from France, so it's really impressive that she made, she took the course to make the dell herself. So it was pretty amazing for me, for example, because I have never ever tried to make a dell for myself, but she made it. So she will give you some presentation about the Mongolian traditional costume. So please welcome Isolin. Hello everyone, thank you very much to the American Center for Mongolian Studies to let me say just a few words about uh, the DEL. But uh, to start, what is uh, the DEL exactly? This is the traditional costume of Mongolia worn today by both men and women. And the Mongolians are very attached uh, to this ancient garment in Mongolia and uh, he has a very important place in society today. Indeed, the Dell is the primary garment of the Mongols. It can be described as a dress coat consisting of a collar, long sleeves, and a single breasted flap folded and buttoned on the right side of the chest, and worn with a belt. It differs according to the time period and the territory, also the ethnic affiliations and different occasions. There are deals for daily use, hospitality, parties, specific seasons, and of course, special events. The deal can be made from different materials like silk, cotton, 
or felt. And for example, Paul, on this um, slide, you can see uh, one of my friend, Ene, wearing different Dell. For example, the Dell is also worn by politicians on the occasion of state ceremonies, as in the, this picture where you can see the former president of Mongolia, Mr. Elbeck Dorch, wearing a Dell in his official 2017 New Year's greeting. It can also be seen at the local level, since some Mongolian groups, such as the Buryats, use their costumes to stand out. Here, the opening of their Dell differs from those of other Dells of different groups of Mongolia. The Dell is used for different festivities. For example, at Delta Mongol, just before the Nadam, there are parades on the Surbatar place, uh, where parades where old uh, clothes are replicated and reinvented and are worn by different participants. Furthermore, at the Nadam festival, we can also